left-hand side for Vieira, who will play through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal, Gabriel Jesus to finish it off, oh and what a way to do it, Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal, he's back and he's back with a bang, into the penalty area it goes, Gabriel Keller and it's into the back of the net, Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to another edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simiou. And on this episode, we're going to talk about that game last night at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, what the outcome of that game and the result means for Arsenal in terms of the title race. Is it over? No, it's not over, but it's looking increasingly unlikely that Arsenal are going to be crowned Premier League champions this weekend. <sighs> I've got to say, I am feeling a little bit deflated. And I've said this so many times over the last few weeks. It's like, we do our job. We're buzzing. We're happy. Um, you know, we're talking about another professional Arsenal performance. We're talking about Arsenal having done what was required of them again. And then City turn up and City do their job and make it look so easy most of the time. Um, and it does take the wind out of your sails. And this was kind of my last hope in terms of Manchester City dropping points. I don't think they're going to drop anything at home to West Ham on the final day. I actually think it's more likely that Everton, who have the second most clean sheets in the Premier League, or at least did going into the weekend, when I checked it, are going to cause us a problem rather than West Ham, who have conceded so many goals this season, only the bottom three in the Premier League have conceded more, are going to cause any sort of upset at the Etihad. But listen, while there's a chance, you have to believe. And if I were the manager, if I were one of those players, I certainly wouldn't be uh, wanting to kind of fall into that defeatist mindset that maybe has come over me um, over the last sort of 24 hours or so. But look, you've got to be realistic about these things and we need to manage our expectations going into Sunday. I've said for a long, long time that whatever happens on Sunday um, in terms of who wins the title, as long as we've done our job, I'll be proud. I'll be happy um, in terms of the progress that we've shown. It could have been the perfect finish. It could have been the grandstand moment. It could have been, um, you know, uh, the kind of thing that you don't experience very often in life, which is that incredible joy that football can bring you. It probably isn't going to be that, but that doesn't mean there's no chance get to the game on Sunday, get behind the team, support them, make sure we show our appreciation um, for another wonderful ride that they've taken us uh, on along this season. And yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at on it. I, I made peace with the fact that Tottenham were never going to take anything off of Manchester City a long time ago. Um, I placed two bets last night. I placed Tottenham nil, Manchester City three. And Tottenham nil, Manchester City four. That's how confident I was that Manchester City were going to turn up there and, and roll them over. And look, there was a lot of talk in the lead up to this game about whether or not Tottenham would try, about whether or not Tottenham wanted to win this football match. And you only had to have Sky Sports News on for half an hour yesterday to see how many fans they stopped in the street who said, no, nope, absolutely, we want to lose this game. We're not interested in this game. Um, we're only concerned about, we're only interested in stopping Arsenal. And that was wild to me, not because I don't understand rivalry. Of course I do. When Tottenham were in the UEFA Champions League final, I desperately wanted to see them lose, but that didn't have a direct impact on us. And this is the bit that I don't get. This is the bit that I think Ange Postacoglu doesn't get. And we'll come on to talk about him in a minute. This thing of going into a game, knowing that Champions League football is still up for grabs for you, and wanting to lose, it's wild. I can't get my head around it. I get the rivalry. I really, really do. And if I were a Tottenham fan last night, the way I would have looked at it is we can still get in the Champions League. Let's go out there. Let's give it our all. Let's try and win the game. If we win the game, we go into the final day where Villa play Palace, a very informed Crystal Palace, by the way. And there's a chance that if we do our business on the final day against Sheffield United, we could sneak into the Champions League. 
Now, if you go in with that mindset and then you don't get the result that you want, then you've got that consolation of as a rival fan having done some damage to Arsenal's title hopes. OK, you've got that as a consolation, but it shouldn't be the primary objective. It shouldn't be the priority when there is something at stake for your very team. And Ange Postacoglu might say, I'm not bothered if we finish in the top four. I've got friends that are Tottenham fans who have said, I'm not sure that we're ready for the Champions League. And actually, maybe the Europa League would be the next step. Uh, that we should be looking to take because it allows us to bring through younger players. We can make more rotation. You can start to build out a squad that way. Maybe the Champions League is too much for Tottenham at this stage in their development. Understand that. But Daniel Levy wanted Champions League. Ange Postacoglu knows how Daniel Levy operates, OK? He's not stupid. He wasn't born yesterday. He will have seen all the stories in the past. There's an incredible clip going around on social media of a cut put together. I think it's by Haters TV where they've put uh, Mourinho talking about Levy and Tottenham and then Conte talking about Levy and Tottenham. And now they've put Postacoglu's comments from last night in there. And what you've got is essentially um, a load of... Someone's just swung a door that's hit onto the door of my booth. Incredible. Um, but what you've got is a, a sort of a compilation of a number of different managers saying very, very similar things about Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And if I were a fan, of that particular establishment, shall we say, I would be embarrassed of that. The fact that some of the world's greatest managers in Mourinho and Conte have come out and said those things is embarrassing. And the fact that Ange Postacoglu, who at the start of the season was being called the Messiah, and, and there were some people out there that had Tottenham down as title contenders, is now saying those same things just a few months later. It says a lot. What I don't want to do because I'm trying to look at this as fairly as I possibly can. What I don't want to do is accuse Tottenham players or the manager of going out there with anything other than the intention to win, because I think that's unfair. Did I have my doubts about how seriously they would take it going into the game? Did I say that the want of the fans could subconsciously seep into the players' mindset and maybe even Ange Postacoglu's in the build-up to the game. Yeah, because I was worried about that. But you know what? Credit where credit's due. I thought that Ange Postacoglu showed that he is the man that he says he is in terms of being principled and wanting to go out there and do the best for his football club. And I think that the players did too. The only thing that let them down last night was the supporters. And I really do believe that when you're at home in a big game like that against an opposition that is superior to you, the fans can be the difference makers. Like imagine that that, that was a raucous atmosphere last night and Tottenham put in the performance that they did. Maybe they'd have got more out of that game. Maybe they'd have got an extra 7 10% of energy when it really mattered. Um, you know, when they were going forward and all the rest of it. I, I really do think that makes a difference. And I think Tottenham lacked that last night because of the strange atmosphere. The strange atmosphere that I predicted in every preview that I did of this game on whatever platform, I, I kept saying it. If the fans aren't interested, that creates an eerie, weird atmosphere. It was so flat. You could hear individual voices. If you can hear individual voices shouting stuff in a Premier League game, then there is a problem particularly at a stadium that holds 60,000 people. And I've been to Spurs, OK? I was there a few weeks ago. That south stand, when it gets going, it's really bloody loud. It really, really is. So for that to be, you know, just a... a, a I was going to say a bit part, but it was just a non-entity. Like, it was not... In, the, the crowd were not involved in the game in any shape whatsoever. And that was a problem for Tottenham. And I honestly think that that's why Ange Postacoglu was so annoyed after the game. You've got fans turning up with Manchester City badges on their shirts. You've got Tottenham fans doing the Poznan when Manchester City have scored against them. And you've got one particular fan behind the dugout goading Ange Postacoglu and shouting at him and screaming at him and asking him why he's not thrown the game. And Postacoglu reacted. We've all seen the clip going around on social media. You know why? Because he has realised the penny has dropped for Ange Postacoglu with regards to the mentality that he is dealing with at that football club. Now, I don't want to paint all Spurs fans with the same brush because I think all fan bases have got people that are off their nut. We've got plenty ourselves, OK? Um, people will probably say that about me. A lot of people probably say that about me. 
I just think that I just think that Ange Postacoglu over the course of the last few days must have got a vibe or a feeling um, from those within the club that stopping Arsenal was more important than them pursuing their own objective, no matter how likely you think it is that they would have got Champions League football or not, um, even if they had picked up the result. I just get the feeling that he got that vibe and he's clearly very upset about it. He's clearly very annoyed about it. And you know what? I don't want to like Ange Postacoglu because he's the Tottenham manager. And I've been massively critical of him in recent months when I feel he's failed to be adaptable. When I feel that he's cost his team points by being stubborn with regards to certain issues that we can all see. But I got a lot of respect for him after last night because he said that he was going to take it seriously. He adapted his tactics, which is something I don't think he does often enough. And for large periods in that game, they kept Manchester City at bay. You could see he was visibly pissed off when they conceded the goal that they did, um, you know, to make it 1-0 to City because of the laps defending. And you could see he was getting agitated by the lack of atmosphere, the, the toxic little bit of atmosphere that came across. And in particular, a certain group of supporters that were very much hoping and willing uh, Tottenham to lose the game. Like, I've got more respect for Ange Postacoglu this morning, um, today, than, I, than I've had ever before. So fair play to him. And as I say, I thought the players put in a good performance. I thought... They were unlucky not to get something out of the game based on the pattern of it. Obviously, Son Kyung Min's miss. Um, oh, man, like I didn't watch it live and I'm so glad I didn't because I think I would have broke something in the house. Genuinely, like I think I would have broke something. So I'm glad I didn't see it um, in real time. And I watched it back afterwards knowing that he'd missed and it, I was able to kind of prepare myself mentally for what I was about to witness. But that wasn't the only chance. They had other chances. Couldn't for the life of me figure out why Dejan Kulusevski didn't start the game. Oh, every time I watch Spurs, he seems to be the best player. So, yeah, a little bit frustrated by that when I saw the lineups. But look, it is what it is. I'd, I'd conditioned myself um, well in advance uh, to sort of dealing with the possibility of Spurs getting nothing because it doesn't matter how much effort they put in. It doesn't matter um, what the crowd's kind of want was. Obviously, it has some influence, but... The, the bottom line is that Manchester City are a far better football team than Tottenham Hotspur. And so they were always likely to win that game. Look, I was looking at the odds before the game. I looked at the odds for a draw and it was six to one. Six to one for Tottenham to get a draw at home to Manchester City, which shows you how big a favourites they were going into this game. So, yeah, we're desperate um, at this stage in the season. We're hoping for City to drop points. We were always going to get a little bit excited maybe at some stage and, and maybe start to believe. But the most likely outcome happened. And if you weren't prepared mentally for that, I don't know what to say to you because we could all kind of see it coming a mile off. But yeah, look, it's not over. Um, obviously, we go into the final day. Let's just go and do our job. Let's just go and enjoy the day. Let's beat Everton. And of course, we'll keep an ear out for the score over at the Etihad. It probably isn't going to go our way. Um, but if it does, it'll make the party that bit sweeter, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, look, I was really upset last night. I was really dejected. Um, my wife thought that something really bad had happened. Um, well, this was something really bad, I guess, but something that she would deem to be really bad, uh, had happened when she saw my face. Um, but no, just this. Um, and as I say, I expected it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt when it happens. Um, and look, they can lap it up all they want. How funny would it be if they mess up against Sheffield United at the weekend and they end up missing out on European football altogether? Then that would have really backfired, wouldn't it? And Ange Postacoglu would be absolutely livid because I honestly believe he thought that his side could get something out of that game. And I honestly believe that at half time he would have got in the dressing room, got those players sitting down and been really happy with what they'd shown so far. They weren't a massive threat going forward in that first period. Benton Core had a good opportunity. Vicario had made a couple of good saves, but it was a really even game. If anything, actually, you'd say that Tottenham was slightly the better team at halftime. They come out in the second half, they concede a silly goal, but then again, they play quite well until they concede the penalty late on. And look, the penalty, Pedro Porro, 
it, you know, Jeremy Doku is incredibly quick and he's got incredibly quick feet. And when you're up against a player like that, you can easily make a misstep, be slightly out with your timing and concede a penalty kick. So just to repeat my whole, kind of whole thing on Spurs, I've enjoyed the fact that Ange Postacoglu's called them out. I've enjoyed the fact that he's livid. I'm enjoying the fact that so many of them are like, you can't tell us how to feel, blah, 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 blah. But actually, when you zoom out of the whole situation and you look at it from a, I'm not going to say I'm a neutral, but a slightly different perspective, actually, he's telling you that there's a problem that two other world-class managers, by the way, had already told you existed, but you didn't want to hear it. You wanted to pretend that it was them, that they were the issue, that Mourinho was the problem, that Conte was the problem. Maybe they were a part of it. Maybe they weren't the right fit at the time. But if greats of the game are telling you that there is an issue with the mentality, not just on the pitch, and I would argue that yesterday it wasn't on the pitch at all, but in the stands, in the boardroom, et cetera, et cetera, maybe you should listen to that. And maybe that should tell you that something is fundamentally wrong at Spurs. And this idea of Spurs becoming a winning club it's not going to come to fruition um, unless major change happens. So if the only thing you can enjoy is stopping us, it says more about you guys than it does about us. But anyway, over it. Let's go on to Sunday. Let's enjoy the final game of the season. Let's get three points on the board. Hopefully score a few goals as well. Hopefully the sun will be shining. We can all have a few uh, drinks together before and after the game. And we'll see where we are on uh, on Sunday evening, right? Um I always say it's the hope that kills you, but you've got to have hope. Otherwise, what's the point? OK, um, today also marks uh, the 20-year anniversary of the Invincibles becoming Invincibles. What an achievement that was. And if you go over to the Arsenal website, there is so much Invincibles content. It is really, really good. Um, go over there, check it out. Go on the Arsenal YouTube channel as well. Uh, there's lots of pieces um, about sort of some of the games and there's a documentary and there's some documentaries on some of the players as well. And they'll be streaming all that stuff on the Arsenal YouTube channel today. It's really worth checking out. Um, I am definitely going to sit down tonight uh, and and go through it all. Uh, you can watch an hour long Invincibles documentary. Uh, you can watch an interview with Arsene Wenger. Um, you can watch uh, one with Colo Toure. Um, there's a game by game section as well where you can sit and watch the highlights it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Um, and on a day like today where your mood probably needs a little bit of lifting, um, it's a good time to kind of sit back, get nostalgic and uh, and go through all of that stuff. But yeah, uh, I'm going to leave it there for today. Just a, a slightly shorter edition, of course. But um, thank you for tuning in. As always, remember uh, to like, remember to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening on audio, please do leave us a review as well. It really, really does help. Um, if you want to support the podcast, support me over the summer to continue bringing you content. Um, we have gone independent now. Please visit the Patreon link in the description below. Um, you can sign up and support, or if you just want to um, see what it's like for a little bit, then you can sign up as a free member too, um, which would be great. Um, it would just be great to have you as part of the community. Link is in the description below. Thank you all so much, and I will see you tomorrow uh, where we'll start to preview the weekend, the big game against Everton, um, what we need to happen on the final day um, for us to come out potentially as champions and um and yeah we're going to wind down the season in a nice way now and if we do go on to achieve uh the premier league title then phew, what a way to end it it will be but if we don't i still think there's so many positives to talk about and i think there's so many reasons to be excited about the summer and obviously the start of the new season we've got the euros as well to enjoy over the course of the summer months um, always good fun taking in an international tournament. I'm going to be out in Germany for two weeks of the Euros, uh, but I'll continue to bring you content. So don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Get involved uh, in the comments section with your thoughts on last night's game as well. And I'll see you all soon. Until the next one, take care.